Hey guys, it's been quite a while and I've been recently getting the old itch to try some Generation 1 Pokemon solo runs. Uh, over the last year I've been watching J Rose 11 and Pika Spray, uh, Madra Bread. I'm not as knowledgeable and proficient as those guys, but I really wanted to give it the old college try here. Today's Pokemon for this inaugural run will be Slowpoke, and my thought process behind this is that one, it is my favorite Pokemon. And two, I wanted to start off with some pre-evolved runs. And three, I just wanted to start off with something that's not the best, but not the worst. And I decided why not. So the one huge drawback to Slowpoke is that it is the slowest Pokemon in Generation 1 by far. Meaning that outside of rare occurrences, it will always take a hit, go second. And from my understanding with these types of runs is that outspeeding your opponent is usually the way to go. Its other stats aren't actually that bad. Its HP stat is actually quite high. Uh, the main thing Slowpoke has going for it is its wonderful move pool. Uh, Water and Psychic are fantastic types. It has access to Dig Early, has access to Ice Beam, obviously Surf and Psychic are some of the strongest moves in Generation 1. It learns Amnesia, which is also one of the strongest moves in Generation 1 for a couple of reasons. One, it raises your special stat by two stages, and in Generation 1, special encompasses both attack and defense, which is it really makes it strong uh, and the second reason will be that it utilizes the gym uh, badge boost glitch and if you're not familiar with the badge boost uh, it basically means that for example when you get the boulder badge it'll increase your attack by 12.5 percent but when you're in battle when you get hit by even like a move like leer or growl um, it'll raise your it'll reapply that badge boost so you get another 12.5 percent and when you use moves offensively like agility or amnesia, uh, it'll get applied that way as well. So it's really strong and it's not really something you can avoid. It's going to be about the only thing I'm going to use that's going to take advantage of a glitch, I guess you would say. But outside of that, nothing else. Uh, in this specific run, I'll be replacing Squirtle with Slowpoke to start off. I'm doing this so that the rival will pick Bulbasaur, which will provide the greatest challenge for me, mainly due to Razor Leaf. Although it is poison type and it will be weak to psychic, but it's just kind of the best fit here and everything's pretty much vulnerable to psychic if we're being real for a second. There are a few rules to this run. Uh, number one is going to be no using items in battle. Pretty self-explanatory. Being able just to constantly heal yourself to full health just kind of eliminates a lot of the challenge in this game. You can pretty much do any run with any Pokemon if you could just use items every turn. Number two is that I only use Slowpoke, no switching for any reason. Uh, I can faint. I don't have to reset, I'll probably reset, but there are some situations where I might just take the faint, uh, like in the Elite Four, for example. Number three is that there are no glitches, um, such as skips or exploits and stuff like that. The badge boost is pretty much the only thing I'm going to be using. Uh, and the last rule, well, my favorite rule, is that there's no saving between Elite Four members. Now this is a big one to me. Uh, you can cheese your way through the game, sure. You can use a lot of different strategies and tactics to get through the game uh, by sheer luck and resetting over and over and over. But when you make it through to the Elite Four, you have to beat five tough battles in a row. No saving between. That means you have to have consistent strategies. And luck will play a part, of course, but I just personally don't like to do this. Uh, other things to note is that I will not be trying to do things like minimum battles for the most part. I will run from wild battles to save a lot of time unless I have to grind for whatever reason. A disclaimer before I begin is that I do make some overall silly mistakes. I do waste a good portion of time. I'm just not all the way familiar with Generation 1 as I used to be. And to me, that's kind of part of the fun. I figured I'd let everyone know up front that I'm not a professional and my overall goal is just to kind of have fun and just make a personal challenge and record it. I am also very aware that I have a deep south southern draw. I do not have a pleasant Canadian, Irish, or British accent, so don't be that person in the comment section, please. Picking right up into the battles, uh, the first rival battle here. Uh, it's not a challenge. Confusion's a really strong move, and there's nothing really to see here. Bulbasaur doesn't have a grass move, but I figured I would start out by showing it. Something odd about Slowpoke that I'll say here early is that Wild Pokemon will not let you escape. This does continue a little bit later into the game. I spend my first route just getting pelted by Pidgeys. 
The first real fight uh, starts in Viridian Forest. I opt to go ahead and take out all three of the bug catchers for some extra experience as I head into Pewter City and we get ready to face Brock. Now this is immediately where my inexperience starts to show. I immediately go to the junior trainer before Brock and I absolutely get destroyed. In hindsight, I probably should have just went straight to Brock and tried my luck, but I was stubborn and I died five times to awful luck and sand attack, which I consider the most annoying move in the existence of all Pokemon. Pocket sand. Now at this point, I went south of Pewter City. I grinded several wild battles to get a level 10, and I lose for a sixth time when I go back to the junior trainer, and I finally squeak by on the seventh time when Sanshiru hurt itself in confusion, allowing me to finally face Brock. And ironically, Brock was much easier than the junior trainer, which makes me question my preparation for the run. Uh, Geodude could have been tougher, I got lucky with the defense curls, and Onyx really wasn't any trouble. Directly after that I head towards Mount Moon and I fight about half the trainers here on the way, little to no trouble, uh, until I run into, uh, of all things, I run into Comfy Shorts Youngster and I quickly get a grim reminder that poison can in fact faint your Pokemon in Generation 1. Maybe I should have been wearing some shorts, I was wearing some pants. In Mount Moon, I grab Water Gun, I teach it to Slowpoke, I grab the Rare Candy, I make my way towards the Rocket Grunts. The Pokemon in here also won't let me escape, and uh, luckily this is a, the last time in the run that I won't have access to Repels, so I don't get harassed by the hordes of Zubats anymore. Now here's a part of the run where I stall just a little bit. This Rocket Grunt with Raticate, he just absolutely destroys me multiple times, and at this point I realize I needed another level or two. Uh, to have a shot at this so for some reason I don't know why I did this I went out I battled the first last that I saw and at this point I hadn't really gained anything I hadn't gained a level or anything but I decided to go back to eradicate for more punishment because like I said I make mistakes in this run so with my tail between my legs I retreat back to the previous route I pick up some trainers that I skipped along the way uh, I finally buy a few potions and antidotes from pewter and I go back to Mount Moon, and we get on with the run. The rematch with Raticate uh, went much better with the extra level. It was still close, and in my ignorance, I thought I could use Disable to get rid of Hyper Fang as like a strategy, but as it turns out, Disable just targets a random move in Generation 1. And obviously, it was Generation 2 that the previously used move gets disabled, and now we know, now we can never use Disable again. The rest of Mount Moon itself is its a breeze. Uh, maybe they should have given these uh, grunts more radicates. I pick the Helix Fossil as a tribute to the one true god and I head out. I arrive in Cerulean City and I decide to attempt Misty right off. The junior trainers inside weren't a problem at all and uh, the Staryu wasn't even a problem from Misty. Starmie, however, uh, resisted all the moves and it was just an absolute wall to me at this point. I needed to be about level 22 so I can get headbutt and I can make it through. So I gotta head up to Nugget Bridge and make my way up to Bill. Uh, this is where we encountered the second rival fight and it's not too bad. I actually lost the first attempt. Uh, I got a dose of pocket sand in my eyes and the resulting misses caused me to get chipped down to the point to where a vine whip could take me out. The rematch went much better, and who who would have thought it's much easier to fight when your face isn't covered in sand? I didn't get chipped down as much, and Bulbasaur is weak to confusion, and I got the win. Nugget Bridge wasn't an issue at all, and then I skipped several trainers on my way up to Bill. Picked up the SSN ticket, and now that I have Headbutt, I'm level 22. Uh, I walk back to Misty, and there isn't really much to say. I already did pretty well against her. Um, the Starmie did use an X defend. It took quite a while, but with the neutral damage from Headbutt, I was able to take it out. And here's the point. I remember there's a rare candy in the backyard, and I spend an embarrassing amount of time just looking for it. So now that we got the second gym out of the way, I dispatch the Rocket Grunt and get access to Dig. And then Slowpoke has a decent spread of moves now, and uh, Dig will be needed for Lieutenant Surge. Which is one of the parts of the game, especially early in the game, I'm worried about. So we make our way down to Vermilion City. I pick up the bike voucher. I board the SSN. I make a beeline straight to Body Slam. And then I get straight on with a third rival battle. And at this point, Sand's not too bad once you get used to it. It's an acquired taste. 
all but Rival 3's last Pokemon isn't an issue. Uh, at this point, it could have knocked me out. It hit a Vine Whip, but I got a really lucky Confusion proc, and it hit itself, and it saved me from having to retry this battle. I got a, l I got a little bit of luck here. From there, I get cut, and then I immediately go and face Lieutenant Surge. I fight all the trainers in the gym to get as much experience as possible. Uh, electric attacks can roll over Slowpoke pretty easy, but, uh, but luckily the gym trainers don't actually really use electric attacks outside of this one Pikachu, and it didn't really hurt that bad, which kind of gave me a little bit of overconfidence. Now when I was originally thinking of this run and what would be some problems, uh, Lieutenant Surge's Raichu is a scary Pokemon. Now Dig could kill it, sure. But Slowpoke will never outspeed it, and if it decides to go for the Thunderbolt, it will knock me out undoubtedly. The first attempt confirmed my suspicions. Uh, Voltorb got one shot, Pikachu's Thundershock didn't hurt that bad, and then Raichu just didn't mess around, went for the Thunderbolt, and just took me out instantly. The second attempt was more or less the same, but instead of going for Thunderbolt, Raichu went for Thundershock, and it hurt pretty bad, about half my health, but I was able to get off a dig, and then it went for Thunderbolt, which is a little bit too late, and I got the third badge. I head back up to Cerulean City, and I obtain the bike, and then we make our way over to Rock Cave. Thankfully, at this point, we have repels, and we didn't use Flash. I don't think no one uses Flash in these runs. Uh, it's really, it's not as annoying as Mount Moon, and the trainers were more or less a non-issue. They were just vessels for me to get experience. I detour through Lavender Town, I hit the underground path, we make our way to Celadon, and here is another moment of inexperience with Generation 1 here, and it may be common knowledge to some people, but apparently there's a very tiny item limit of 20 in this generation, and this will be, uh, this will be a problem I run into a couple of times because I, I just continue to be dumb and I don't visit the PC to deposit items. I pick up a fresh water and a lemonade for the guard and saffron, then I give the girl the fresh water for ice beam for future use, and at this point in the run I'm not really sure if ice beam or blizzard is going to be better, but I figured I'd pick them both up while I was in the area. The game corner hideout was uh, next on the agenda, and since I can now handle radicates no problem, I have no obstacles from the grunts, I get the lift key, I challenge Giovanni, and Giovanni Throughout this run, it's not going to be much of a problem for Slowpoke. Uh, I have the moves to handle every single Pokemon throughout the run. In fact, later in the run, he actually gets easier. Giovanni is one of the few trainers that gets progressively easier as I fight his Pokemon, and he'll be one of the few trainers that I'm actually going to outspeed some of his Pokemon. Now, with that said, the first battle was actually extremely close. Kangaskhan gets me all the way down to 5 HP with a Comet Punch, and luckily it doesn't hit more, and I'm able to knock it out with Dig. I'm not sure why I used Dig as much as I did, and I'm definitely not foreshadowing that cost to me in the future. At this point, I'm well aware that Erica will be a really difficult fight, and it was on my list of hard walls with Lieutenant Surge as some of the potential things I ran into, but I decided to at least go give it a shot. The trainers inside the gym, they weren't too bad, except for this one trainer right here that rap locked me. Uh, with Bellsprout for the entire match and didn't allow me to move until I died a horrible death. Now since I beat Lieutenant Surge, I fully expected to maybe have at least a chance against Erica, and I was really wrong. Uh, here's where the big issue comes in. Uh, outside of the obvious grass being super effective to water, it's the fact that Razor Leaf always critical hits, and if it doesn't use it, it'll just put me to sleep, and on top of that, I can't do nearly enough damage to it to even threaten it. It was really an awful experience. Uh, we tried, but it was the first big wall. He needs some milk. And it was obvious after about half a dozen battles that I'd have to come back to this. For the sake of experience, uh, I go ahead and finish off the rest of the gym. All the trainers in the gym, I go ahead and finish that off. Uh, we head out west of Celadon. We pick up Fly. And now that we got Fly, I can pick up Psychic from Mr. Psychic and Saffron. And we hit a pretty huge power spike because Psychic's just a really, really strong move. At this point, it's back to Lavender Town. We go into Pokemon Tower, and you know what that means. It's time for the fourth rival battle, or as I like to call it, Sand Attack Roulette. As the previous battles have went, all but the last Pokemon, they really don't provide much difficulty. It's always going to be the last Pokemon, the Ivysaur, the Venusaur. Did I say that weird? Venusaur? Luckily... 
it likes to use leech seed this time, and I'm able to get to the fight on the first time, no hassle. The rest of the channelers and the grunts, they get squashed, I rescue Mr. Fuji, and we run into more item problems. This is an example of me not being familiar with the game, and I have to just ditch some items. Now at this point in the game, I have some options. Erica is more or less off the table for now, but I can go fight Sabrina, I can uh, fight Blaine, I can fight Koga. So I decide that I'm going to head towards Cycling Road, wake Snorlax up, and make our way to Koga. The trainers before Koga allow us to hit level 40, which is an amnesia power spike, which I've already mentioned how strong the move was. And at first, I thought Koga would be a really easy trainer being poison typing and me being psychic typing with psychic. But it wasn't as cut and dry as that. The first battle with Koga is pretty annoying. I get poisoned instantly. And then I get hit by Sand Attack's brother, Smokescreen, by the second coughing, and then I get chipped down low enough to where a self-destruct by Weezing will just take me out. The second fight is even more annoying. I get hit by the Sand Attack brother from the start, and then Muck decides it's time to use Sand Attack's uncle, Minimize, multiple times to assure that I'm at peak annoyance, and then I just die. The third time is the charm. I'm able to set up Amnesia. I, I miraculously avoid the Sand Attack family. And when I make it to Weezing, I'm healthy enough and boosted to take it out with a psychic in one hit. Now after Koga here, my brain just goes completely dead. And I forget that, they're, that the Safari Zone is required. So I fly back to Saffron to fight Sabrina. And I forget about Silph Co entirely. I don't know what was going on here. And on top of that, I'm really not even that familiar with the Safari Zone layout. And I waste an entire couple of attempts figuring out where to go. I was just straight up lost. Eventually, after some resets, I do find the Warden's Teeth. And I get Surf, which is another pretty big power spike for uh, Slowpuck. We're pretty much at peak moves right here. I give the Warden's Teeth. I get Strength. And uh, here's another example of me being a complete idiot. Uh, there are two things that waste a significant amount of time here. The first is that I wanted a Pokemon that could learn Strength. And I searched an embarrassing amount of time checking and looking for Pokemon that could learn it. And eventually I make my way back below Cerulean and I get this Mankey here. And then when I finally teach it string, then I go back to the Warden's house uh, to get the rare candy behind the boulder. This is where I learned uh, that you need the Saffron Gem badge to use strength outside of battle. And here is the exact moment that my character dies on the inside. Now for some unexplained reason right here, I decided, hey, this is the time I'm going to go back and try Erica again. And I go back and I try a dozen times, 12 times, before I realize that I have no chance. Uh, I can't take, I just, I can't do it. I can take a single Razor Leaf hit, but I can't set up Amnesia. Uh, I can't one hit KO it, so it's just, it's not happening. But I still, I try 12 times, guys. Now... Not counting Erica at this point, we can more or less finish the rest of the badges in the game. Uh, we start off, we head to Silphco. I was able to take out Rival 5 in one go. Now at this point, it's really just a matter of Sand Attack. I mean, this whole game just revolves around Sand Attack. Sand Attack, Smoke Screen, Minimize, who knows, you know, and you never know what's around the corner anymore. But you can set up your Amnesias. It's usually not too bad. These battles usually come down to what the Venusaur is going to use at the end. We make it to Venusaur this time, and I do take a lot of chip damage. A Razor Leaf would have took me out, but thanks to the Amnesia boost, I'm able to survive a Vine Whip. Even at really low HP, I'm able to survive. And we pick up the win, and we're able to make our way to Giovanni. Now, this is perhaps one of the easier major fights in the game thus far. Uh, the level advantage, along with Amnesia, allows me to just use Surf and Psychic to sweep through his Pokemon. And with that, we're on to the Saffron Gym. Obviously, Psychic isn't very effective to Psychic. So Sabrina didn't really take too much effort, and the way the AI works is that they really don't want to go for non-effective moves, which resulted in me just being able to freely set up Amnesia. It was slightly tedious because Surf got disabled, and I was able to finish off the Alakazam with about half my HP left and that's six badges down with two to go and at this point I really don't want to retry Erica and since I'm water type I have access to surf we fly to pallet town and we head down to Cinnabar Island I pick up Blizzard and the secret key and then we head to the gym 
Um, every trainer in here goes like you would expect. Complete wash. And then Blaine goes like how you'd expect as well. I set up Amnesia just because. And although I'm fairly sure I didn't have to do all three Amnesias here, I do it anyway. And then every every single one of these Pokemon get one shot by the Surf. And it's really the easiest gym battle up to this point. Um, up to this point anyway. Giovanni will probably be easier. Kobe! So Slowpoke is now level 49. And if I can't get past Erica at this point... When will I ever be, t you know, when will I be able to? I don't know. Uh, I'll just have to keep grinding, I guess. Now that's a lot of damage! Anyway, we go with the increased levels. We're finally able to one-shot the Victory Bell, which is by far the most dangerous Pokemon in the game to this point, maybe period. Uh, Tangela, surprisingly, it survives a Psychic, but it doesn't even use a Grass move, and Vileplume just goes down in a single hit. And now there's one gym left. Uh, I head over to Viridian, we fight Giovanni, but I get the feeling that I'll need some levels for the Elite Four, so I go ahead and opt to go ahead and fight all these trainers in this gym because it's just free experience. I'm going to need it anyway. Might as well do it. When we get to Giovanni, this is this is the easiest gym. This is even easier than Blaine, and we just talked about that. Uh, amnesia coupled with Surfs, it's just laughable. It's one of the easiest gems, especially for Slowpoke. Kobe! After that, it is now time for the hardest part of the game, and... I take what I'm about to say from watching J-Rose and his runs. He always says the gyms are like the regular season and anybody can do it. And now it's time for the playoffs. It's time to see if we can finish off the game's toughest fights all in a row. But first we have to fight Rival 6. And we know how this is going to go at this point. The same old drill, guys. We set up against Pidgeot. We pray we don't get sand attacked eight times. Uh, we roll through his whole team, and then Venusaur comes out, and we decide if the AI is going to use Razor Leaf or not. And unfortunately for us, the first time we fight it, the AI does decide that it was time for me to die. We go into the second attempt, uh, more or less the same. Venusaur decides it wants to use Vine Whip this time, and since it's not broken and doesn't always crit, I take the battle. We head over to Victory Road, and I more or less battle all the trainers that I can... Dude, I got, I'm limited on PP here. PP, my PP's limited, guys. So I fight as much as I can. I even just, just for giggles, I, I fight Moltres. And it turns out it's a mistake because Fire Spin is really broken. I get locked down. Uh, I'm having Vietnam flashbacks of the Bell Sprout in Erica's gym for the first time. Uh, but the second time, I still take a lot of damage. Even though it's a Fire type, I take a ton of damage, but I'm able to get off a of serve. And I get the extra experience. I guess that's my compensation for just wasting time for no reason. Now we're on to the Elite Four. And my initial thoughts to the Elite Four is that Agatha would give me the most problems. And would be the most annoying. And then Lance would require a lot of leveling up. And the final rival battle would more or less be how it's been. Uh, is Venusaur going to use Razor Leaf? Am I going to get Sand Attacked? Who knows? We go into Laura Lee, and I actually lose my first battle. It didn't start off bad. Uh, I even get help from the Dugong. It gives me a couple of growls and helps my badge boost out. Uh, but I take a lot of chip damage, and then Lapras just crits me and finishes me off. The second attempt starts off pretty bad. I get crit, and for some reason I try to use Dig, and it really costs me. And by the time I make it to Lapras, I just get slammed down, and I have to retry again. Now at this point, the battle doesn't really appear to be that consistent. Uh, sure, there's some mistakes, like I used Dig and I got unlucky with some crits, but I still feel like this is doable. Uh, I eliminated Dig from the strategy for now, uh, foreshadowing by the way, and by the time I make it to Lapras this time, I have enough health to survive two body slams. Uh, luckily it didn't crit, and I'm able to make it past the first Elite Four member. And there's, there's not much to say about Bruno. It's almost like Giovanni, but easier. Uh, I have moves with Stab that all do super effective against the whole team. And with Amnesia, I probably don't even need to use them. 
Um, a champ does have a chance to force me to reset with the Fisher, but luckily I don't think that's ever an issue in this run. My first attempt with Agatha, it went about how I expected. It's just straight up, it's annoying. And that's really the only way to put it. Um, I have the offensive power to sweep through her team, but Slowpoke's slow speed, it comes into play here more than any other battle inside the game. Maybe outside of Erica, uh, Hypnosis, Confuse Rays, Haze, it's just frustration incarnate. The first attempt went really poor. I hit myself via Confusion several times, and Hypnosis eventually forces me to have to restart. The retry with Laura Lee goes without a hitch. And here's Bruno. What can we say about this? his pathetic attempts that hasn't already been said? My second run at Agatha started with a started with bad luck. Uh, I got confused. I hit myself twice. I still wanted to set up an amnesia. Uh, I went to half health uh, and I was actually able to pull this off. I went down pretty low but I started sweeping. Once you get off one it just keeps going and uh, it's not a consistent fight by any means but I do get my first attempt on Lance. Now at this point he was this is a really this is gonna be a really weird sequence of events here. At this point, I had a decision to make in my head, and I do some stupid things. I had a choice here. I could use my rare candies and my singular max elixir to give this a genuine shot. Now, at this point, I had zero PP left on uh, Psychic, and I doubted myself. I didn't think I could do it at level 60, uh, so I opted to save my rare candies and save my elixir and just do the battle, and if I faint, I'll just keep the levels and I'll retry. Now I also made another huge mistake here. Uh, I forgot to use Ice Beam and I kept Dig which is going to be very very costly. Um, and we can just be real here and say Dig has been a useless move since I used it against Lieutenant Surge 8 hours ago. Now hindsight is 2020, but I can't help but wonder if I would have restored uh, Psychic's PP. Uh, learned Ice Beam and then used my rare candies to get me up to level 67 if I could have pulled this off and just ended the run right here And I'm pretty sure that we could have because look at this uh, I'm more or less forwarded this match, but I got really lucky uh, With Leers and Amnesia's it set me up with a badge boost enough to let my level 60 slowpoke It was able to outspeed both the Dragonairs and the Dragonites and at this point if I had Ice Beam, it was over with. Now I make it all the way to Dragonite, and I have no PP on Psychic, and I have one move left on Surf, and it doesn't knock it out. And Dig is just useless here. I can't use it. It's not effective against Flying. And here I have a moment of weakness. I'm actually on the item screen staring at my Lone Elixir, and I'm wondering who would really care if I use this, but I, I fought the devil, and I kept the integrity of the challenge in check, and the whole point of throwing this fight was that I wanted to keep the levels. So I opt not to hard reset, and I keep the levels that I gained, and then I black out after a hyper beam. Now at this point in the run, it drags on a little bit. I'm pretty tilted, and it's going to show. I, may, I start making several pretty silly mistakes. I go into Laura Lee, and for some reason I'm thinking, hey, I'll just use Dig a couple of times. And I'll save some PP for my stronger moves so that I can more liberally use them later. And I just get bonked and I have to redo it. I go back in and I fight Laura Lee again. And once again, I'm, I'm just, I'm stupid. I don't know what I'm doing here. I mess around with Dig once again and I die in the hole that it just made. Uh, with the recording, there's also some inconsistency I noticed here. I believe there was a little bit of time before I recorded my voice, uh, the voiceover and the footage. I believe that I actually grinded a level and I forgot to save it and then I died on the first rematch and I just didn't do the grind again. It was really frustrating. Hey look, here I finally learned my lesson and I go ahead and I get rid of Dig so that it's impossible for me to use it to make me lose another match. Here we go back into Laura Lee, calm, collected, no Dig. Now even, even with all this, uh, I come out of the fight, I'm paralyzed, I got 12 HP left. Now this fight will definitely need a couple of levels to be more consistent, but it's not awful, it's, it's still doable. And here's Bruno again, just enjoy Machamp getting absolutely murdered by a psychic, and then watch me accidentally evolve Slowpoke into Slowbro, and it forces another reset, and this is truly what hell is. Got he! <laughs> 
Going back into Laura Lee, I absolutely crush her this time. I have 133 HP left. But once again, and this is not the last time this is going to happen, I accidentally let Slowpoke evolve. And this is just... It's just a silly goose mistake, you know what I'm saying, guys? And it really makes me frustrated with myself. And I really wish this was the last time. I really do wish it was the last time, but it's not. And I'm losing my sanity at this point. Getting really frustrated. After the reset, we fight Laura Lee again. And I do really well. Nothing new to say here. We've seen this a couple of times. And I just want to say that Bruno's awful. And I'm only showing this clip to lend some credibility to the fact that I'm not saving between Elite Four members. We make it back to Agatha, and I gotta say at this point, um, I'm surprised that the Agatha fight feels very consistent. Uh, I only set up a single Amnesia due to how volatile this fight is and how fragile her Pokemon are. Gobat's always going to be annoying with Haze, and it's always going to be Roulette on if it'll keep the setup or if I gotta keep trying, but I keep trying anyway. So it uses Wing Attack back to back. And I get the opening, I sweep through it, I kill the, I kill it, I kill the Haunter, I kill the Arbok, the second Gengar, I'll go down without much trouble. Now, are you guys ready for this one? This is perhaps the most frustrated I can remember being in quite a while. So you know that feeling when you are deep into a solo Pokemon run, and then you're going to use all your rare candies in the final Lance battle, and the B button just doesn't register, and you're forced to reset and lose all the experience that you just got because you are now the proud owner of a slow bro. This one hurt. I don't mind losing. I don't mind grinding. I don't mind wasting time. But I hate it when I make stupid mistakes. And guys, you know the drill with Laura Lee. This one I get by lower than usual, but I still get by. Bruno, everyone, can we get a round of applause for the absolute worst... Wait, what's this? Check this out. Check this out, guys. I forgot to set up Amnesia on Onyx. Uh, at this point, I'm on autopilot. Hitmonchan uses Ice Punch, and it gets the 10% freeze chance, despite it has a super effective Thunder Punch that it just used. It doesn't make any sense. It forces another reset. All I can really do at this point is just kind of hang my head in shame. A single tear rolls down my cheek. This is truly rock bottom. Now, at this point in the run, I'm going to start... Skipping Laura Lee and Bruno battles, uh, unless I lose or something happens. If it's consistent, I'm just gonna skip it just to save time. And on our ninth attempt, uh, the very next attempt actually, uh, pick back up on Agatha on what I believe is, I'm pretty sure this is the ninth time. Now at this point, I don't bother setting up Amnesia on Gengar. It's too dangerous just to mess around with. I take my chances on setting up Amnesia on Gobat, and that does get me through the rest of the fight. And here I've very carefully use my rare candies before Lance. I get to level 69. Nice. And I save one rare candy so that I can use it after the fight to reset my experience to avoid resetting my badge boost in the final battle. Now finally we're back to Lance. I fully set up Amnesias and I get, I get lucky. I get a Leer. And as we saw in that fight a while ago, um, I'm able to outspeed the three dragons. Aerodactyl is still faster, but luckily it only used a Hyper Beam and critically hit my arm off, taking me to 7 HP, but that's all we needed to finish off the Dragonite with an Ice Beam. And we are on to the champion for the first time. And at this point, you know what the fight's going to depend on. We've seen this play out more or less for the entire game. Uh, we set up against Pidgeot, hope we don't get sand attacked. And we have an easy time against the rest of the team. And then we just hope we don't take a lot of chip damage and more importantly we hope that Venusaur doesn't decide to use Razor Leaf. I do get a little worried during this fight. I forgot to use that last rare candy I literally just mentioned and I level up after the Alakazam and it resets my badge boost and the Amnesia boosts were still strong enough and Gyarados even helped me out. Good guy Gyarados helped me out here with a, a friendly leer to get the badge boost back at least some of it and then finally the moment of truth comes venusaur comes out and the pokey gods convene and they decide what my fate here is today and they show me mercy venusaur wants to use solar beam Kobe. and i get a free psychic and that's all it takes and the run is over now at this point i feel like it's fair to say that 
If I wasn't stingy with my rare candies, the first fights would have been a lot more consistent and easier. Lance is more or less always going to be kind of luck based because I think I'll need a leer or two to outspeed the dragons to make life easier. And the champion was probably always going to be a toss up. Uh, Razor Leaf's always going to be a huge threat. And I'm not sure how much damage it would do. And I'm really not curious enough to find out. To me, a win is a win. And even though I made a lot of mistakes, namely the accidental evolving of Slowpoke several times at the end, uh, we were able to get through in nine attempts. So not too bad. Uh, overall, the run went pretty well. Erica was probably the biggest bump in the road. I more or less had to save it until the end of the game. Because Razor Leaf is no joke in Generation 1, especially if you're weak to it. We finished in 8 hours and 30 minutes, which is probably slow to a lot of people, but I thought it was pretty good. And I'd like to say that I'm new to solo runs, and I had a lot of fun. Obviously, I'm rusty on several things. And it added way more than an hour to my total playtime. Uh, this is at least it's a bar for me to start off, and I'd really appreciate it if you guys would let me know what you think about this run. Uh, I haven't uploaded a video since 2019, and I just randomly got inspired to do this, so if the three people out there wondered where I've been, uh, just know that I've been doing fine, and I hope you're all doing fine as well. Uh, this has been a lot of work to do, and I can't really emphasize enough that I'd greatly appreciate any feedback, support, likes, any sort of interactions you guys would like to give. And if you want to see any more solo runs, just uh, let me know. I had a great time. I'd be down to record more of these. Even if just a small amount of people was interested, that's enough for me. And with that said, this has been a successful Slowpoke-only run of Pokemon Red. And I will see you guys sometime with another video.